Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Reference Point. I'm your host, Dave Cokerhook, and this evening we're going to be talking about the healthcare industry, more specifically the delivery of healthcare services to us as patients and consumers of healthcare. And with me this evening is Dr. Sonia Kim, who is a medical professional who specializes in the area of emergency care medicine and is now doing house calls. Is that correct? Yes. Dr. Kim, welcome to Reference Point. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. So tell me a little bit about your, your medical history. I, what I wanted to do is I wanted everybody to understand a little bit about how you got to the point you are right now, because you've been a, a, an MD for a while now, and, mm -hmm. and you've worked in a number of hospitals across the country, correct? Yes, yes. I um, went to medical school in New York and uh, completed my emergency medicine residency training in Philadelphia after which I moved to Northern California and worked as an attending physician in a number of different emergency departments, and Hawaii as well. And after practicing emergency medicine in level one trauma centers and level two trauma centers and taking care of very sick patients, I uh, decided to go back to school for my dual MBA ah. at Columbia Business School and UC Berkeley. So that's when my second chapter of my professional journey began. And long story short, I decided to found Best MD House Calls in 2009. Well, let me ask you a little bit about this. I, uh, you, you mentioned uh, emergency care medicine, or, or I, I can't remember the exact, the exact term you used when you were talking about the kind of positions you were in trial. Anyway, what, what exactly is that all about? I mean, as, a, as someone that, you know, every now and again I need to go see a doctor or something, mm -hmm. You know, you go to visit your, your, um, your primary care physician to get a physical or whatever, but you're talking about more severe and serious kind of uh, circumstances that you were dealing with every day. Is that correct? Yes. As a board-certified emergency physician working in the hospital-based emergency room, I was dealing with anything, just about anything under the sun. Um, we cared about, we cared uh maybe over 50,000, 70,000 patients per year. Wow. Um, so it's a large emergency room with heavy volume. So you've in, got automobile accident victims right. or somebody that fell down and hurt himself, somebody that's feeling like they have a heart attack or something like that, all those right. sorts of things. Right. Now, ASAP, American College of Emergency Physician, have done a study a number of years ago to look at all the cases that came into emergency room across the nation mm -hmm. to see how, what percentage of those cases we saw in the ER were truly life-threatening emergency and what percentages were not life-threatening not, not, not life threatening emergencies. And it turns out over 85% of the cases that came into emergency rooms were non-life-threatening cases. Non-life-threatening non cases. Non-life-threatening cases. So they could have actually uh, met their medical needs without having to jump in an ambulance or get in somebody's car and drive exactly. to the ER. Exactly. In those cases, in most cases, um, they could have been seen by their primary care physician by making an appointment and seeing them, or they could go to the urgent care or they could go to the immediate care clinics. Mm -hmm. uh, but many of these patients um, simply didn't have enough um, access uh, to get quality care. Mm. And that's why I decided to found Best MD House Calls because I simply wanted to provide another option to Americans who just wanted to get top quality care, which were non-life-threatening cases. So. Let's talk about that a little bit, this idea of uh, house calls. Uh, I, I remember when I was a kid that the, um, uh, and I, I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and mm -hmm. um, we had a, the, the doctor would, when the kids were sick, when I was sick, the doctor would come visit, have his black bag, he'd walk in the door, open his stuff up, he's got the stethoscope, he's got all the goodies in there, okay? But that hasn't happened here in the United States for mm -hmm. decades, mm -hmm. okay? So is this, concept of, of um, uh, physicians going to the patients again, is this actually a trend that's, that's reoccurring here in the States? I believe so. I think many patients are hungry for um, more of a one-on-one -on -one contact, more face time with their physician who can truly connect with the patients and give compassionate care, which can be uh, a challenge in a busy emergency room oh, or busy course. urgent care center. Um, or even at your own doctor's office where there's 50 patients to be seen in a day, a doctor, a caring doctor, can't just spend half an hour with each patient because he has to see 50 other patients or 40 other patients. Mm. And so 
with increasing volume, I think quality tends to suffer. And so I decided to found Best MD House Calls so that I can give another option to Americans who wanted to have a little more uh, TLC, right. if you will, from their doctor who knows their whole family and who knows them. I want to dig into this a little bit further because I, I, and the reason I want to do this, Dr. Kim, is that I think it's important that, that the consumer understand what's happening in the medical arena at this point, in the healthcare mm -hmm. arena, because the, uh, you know, it, the last year or so, to last two years, there's been a lot of discussion, um, uh, political discussion, economic discussion about um, the healthcare system and reforms of the healthcare system, et cetera. Now, something you mentioned just a minute ago, though, about a doctor needing to see so many patients, et cetera, mm -hmm. it almost becomes a kind of a, of a, uh, a circumstance where you are, as if you're the doctor in that type of a situation, where it's just like, you know, I got it's almost like an industrial kind of uh, uh, production line. You got to go to the next one, you got to go to the next one, you got to go to the next That's one. Right. What does that do to the doctor? How does, how does that impact the physician? It's, um, that's, a, that's a good question. Um, it's hard um, because we all went into field thinking uh, medicine, practicing medicine was going to be um, in a different way. And now we just, we're just forced to see as many patients as we can because the reimbursement rate from various insurance companies are declining, as you know. And despite the fact the premiums on the consumer side is going up from the insurance company, the reimbursement uh, rate for most primary care uh, practices are going down. Mm -hmm. So that drives the economic, an economic pressure for the physician side. And so just to keep the lights on in a private practice with a, a physician or two, you are forced to see anywhere from 20 to 40 patients a day, I believe. Wow. I believe those were the numbers that I read last. And so with the volume, with that kind of volume, it's, um, it's becoming increasingly difficult to give truly caring um, a visit because you only have 5, 10, 15 minutes at best per well, patient. And I think there's so much more to, to health care than just um, setting a bone or, or prescribing uh, a, a medication. Mm -hmm. the, I mean, your physician is got to be one of the, the closest people to you in your life. I mean, you're going to see your doctor if you've got various and sundry problems that probably nobody else knows about. Right. And so to not be able to have that kind of uh, close confidant type of relationship that's not only, I can see how that would be hard on the doctor, but it's, got, it's, hard, it's also hard on the patient side, too. Right, right. You said something to me earlier, and before the show we had a chance to talk, and, and you were saying something about, uh, and I think it had to do with uh, primary care physicians, that there is a projected a shortage of mm -hmm. uh, physicians in the system in the not-too-distant future. T tell me a little bit more about that. What, what, what is, seems to be going on? This is important for us to know sure, as, as consumers. Sure, so. sure, sure. Um, I think the role of primary care physician is very important for most Americans because we have to make sure that we do all the right things in terms of the preventive medicine side to prevent you from getting ill or getting your chronic uh, disease out of, out of control. Um, but it's becoming more and more challenging to do that, mm -hmm. do what we're supposed to do. And more and more med students, medical students, are going into more lucrative specialties mm. um, for economic reasons and whatnot. And so there's a, a declining <laughs> um, number of students going into primary care field. And expert, some of the experts are projecting there, there will be at least 45,000 physician shortage in the primary care area in uh, just a few years. 45,000 shortage. Shortage of physicians. Of physicians. Which means if you're thinking about how many thousands of patients per physician, we're looking at hundreds and hundreds of thousands of patients who are going to be scrambling to find primary care physicians who can right. take care of them day-to-day -day basis. Right. So this is going to impact all of us sure. in this country in just a few years. I can see how that, definitely. Well, that kind of leads us into looking at how um, a house call practice might actually be an alternative or, or an adjunct to whatever's going on. I mean, it, 
That statistic that you gave of 85% of the visitations to an emergency room not being a life-threatening circumstance kind of opened my eyes a little bit to like, gee, people are, mm -hmm. uh, they maybe they don't understand how to use the system that's in place. That's okay. right. That's right. But if they don't, um, uh, the kind of service that you're providing now isn't think something that people really know too much about at this point. I mean, you're, you're kind of That's a right. pioneer in that area, I guess. That's right. Um, most people I talk to about house call, um, if they're over a certain age, they do know the concept from their old uh, age, um, from the old days. Um, and if I talk to a younger population, they have no idea what I'm talking about mm -hmm. when I say house calls. When I explain to them what kind of value that we bring, by bringing the doctor to you when you need them within an hour, given the traffic conditions in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And um, we treat you at the comfort of your home at an affordable price that you can afford, whether you have insurance or not, um, they can't believe it. Mm. It's too good to be true, they say. Yeah, right. It sounds that way. And um, majority of our patients are actually repeat uh, repeaters, repeat customers uh, or patients because they realize that we save their time and money and we give, we give them what they want, which mm -hmm. is a compassionate um, care that they don't usually get from anywhere else. I want to let the, uh, the viewers know that th this topic that we're talking about is something that many of you may have absolutely no information on. So by all means, feel free to send an email to me at info at referencepointtv.com. We'll make sure Dr. Kim gets it. And you can go up to her website as well and f learn a little bit more about this sort of thing and communicate with her there. And we're probably showing that information on, on the, uh, the screen right now. But, but I think it's important to try to grab the information and do the research so that you can learn a little bit more about this alternative activity for, uh, for healthcare. So when, um, how do you know whether or not somebody actually needs to, 15% uh, of the circumstances when somebody really needs help, they are in an emergency situation. Mm -hmm. So uh, wh what happens when someone calls you and says, uh, hey, I've got this thing. I mean, wh how, do you, how are you able to ascertain sure. whether you, you can just go over there and help them or whether you, they need to do something else? Sure. So as a board certified emergency physician, I think we're probably in the best uh, seat to be the triaging person. Um, because that's our job, to make sure the person can speak full sentence. If the person calls me, for example, and they can't even talk a full sentence mm. without breaking in because of their respiratory distress, that's a red flag for me, <laughs> first of all. And I can say, please hang up the phone and call 911 because you're not breathing right. Mm. Um, the other day I got a call from a caregiver who takes care of an elderly woman in Berkeley Hills. And uh, she found um, about our our practice, Best MD House Calls, on, on Google. And she asked me if I can come over and take a look at her client. And so I did, and she was fine. So I did a full ex examination, and we connected, and I took a, all of her history. And the next day, I got a call from the same caregiver, mm. because things have changed. Mm. And with some of these elderly women, you could be fine one day, and the next day, something's not right. I can understand. And when she told me that she had a fever of 101.4, and that she was not responding as well as she did the day before when I was there, and that she could not walk, and she could not follow all the commands, that's when I said, please stop right now and call 911, because she needs to go to see the ER doctors and be treated there and perhaps be hospitalized. Mm -hmm. Possible UTI, possible pneumonia, let's see what they find. And in fact, she ended up going to the Alta Bates Hospital, and she was hospitalized for pneumonia mm. and UTI. What is UTI? Uh, urinary tract infection. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so uh, I've got all sort of three-letter acronyms that I use in the high-tech industry, and I know what happens <laughs> right. if you fill them out, too. So that's one example where um, I can easily tell when there's a change in status of a patient, especially on well, somebody that and I've And you have the background for that. You right. spent so much time in the emergency room. Right. And, 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 and like you said earlier, that's the place where the triage activity really has to occur. Right. Okay. So uh, clearly, you're, yourself and, and doctors like you that are, that are uh, moving into the house call industry practice mm -hmm. activity 
are in a position to be able to assist the patient to know whether they really need to go to the ER or whether they, you can go over and, and assist them. Absolutely. So one of the things that I'm sure that the people out there are thinking about is, gee, this sounds like a really expensive situation. And, um, but, it, it, but, but I'm, not so con I'm not really convinced that that would necessarily be the case. And the other thing that they're going to ask about, is, I think, is whether or not the services that you can offer mm -hmm. are things that are going to be able to be incorporated in any way, shape, or form into their, their medical insurance coverage. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the insurance coverage scenario first. Is mm -hmm. that something that uh, fits within the confines of most uh, programs, a, a home visitation type thing? Absolutely. Um, about half of our patients um, use their insurance plan to get reimbursement for the house call visits that I make. So for example, I took care of this elderly woman in back Berkeley and she has a PPO plan through mm -hmm. her husband. And so I uh, simply take care of her medically and they pay me direct and I just help them fill out this one claim form which mm -hmm. is a universal insurance claim form. The bottom half is my part which is um, ICD-9 code, diagnosis code, and billing code and whatnot. So I take care of the complex part, and I just ask the patient or their family to fill out the top portion of the insurance claim form. It's just their name, address, their insurance policy plan, and they sign and they date. That's it. It's really simple for them to fill it out, maybe five minutes, ten minutes tops, and then they submit it to their insurance company, and then their insurance company will review the case and reimburse them up to 80%. In most cases, up to 80%. Some cases, they can get up to 90%, depending on the coverage. That's fantastic. Yes. Yeah, which is wonderful because that you know the, it, it, it I'm sure the impression is, oh, gee, if it's not I'm going to see my doctor or going to the hospital, how do I get that covered? And that's right. great to know right. that it is incorporated into the process, and it's mm -hmm. pretty simple and straightforward to do so. Yes. Well, that's really good. So. Um, Let's talk a little bit about some of the advantages to the patient of, of using this type of a service as opposed to um, the more traditional things that we're all used to at this point in time. Sure. Some of the benefits are basically the three things that I can point out right now. One is the convenience factor. Mm. It's, um, it's tough to find. Let's talk about an example of a working mom. She is 35 years old. She has two, three kids. Mm -hmm and she has two jobs and if one of her kids gets sick her whole day is ruined. Mm -hmm. First of all she has to call in sick or she has to take the part of the day off. Now she has to find a, a nanny at the last minute and good luck with that in the Bay Area, mm -hmm. last minute nanny, uh, to take care of the other two kids while she's taking care of the one ki sick kid. Sure. She has to now call the pediatrician's office and see if they could squeeze her in right. the same day and most of them, they say, come on in. But when she goes to the pediatrician's office, after she finds a last-minute nanny, um, she'll find herself in a room full of waiting room, <laughs> um, sitting there for, sitting there for hours, hours. Yeah. because she's being squeezed in. And right. she's not the only one who's being squeezed in. So she ends up losing about six hours, eight, seven hours of her day. Mm -hmm. And so it's a lost productivity in her work. And it's just too hectic mm -hmm. for a lot of these working moms. So when I talk to these moms about my service, where they can simply pick up the phone and call us, and we just assess the situation by asking a few questions and make sure the kids are not too sick that they mm -hmm. need to go to the emergency room right away, we just give them an ETA. We'll be there within an hour. We'll be there half an hour. And mm -hmm. we go to their home. The doctor will come to their home, take care of the child. The mom will pay us, and mm -hmm. we fill out the insurance claim form, which mm -hmm. I just explained to you. And that's it. And we just saved her five hours of her time. Sure. And she didn't have to look for a nanny. Sure. Now, would you go to a, a, an office, too? I Absolutely. Mean, go, wh wherever the patient is, you'll go. Our office is your office. Ah, very cool. <laughs> you say that. That's cool. Well, that makes a lot of sense. So you said there were three things. Three things. One was the convenience factor. Convenience factor and uh, more time with the patient. Mm. And... Uh, more time with the doctor, basically. Right. More face time with the doctor and saving time. Right. So that makes a lot of sense. And it's, it, so, so let's get back to that question th that um, I, I sort of touched on earlier, which had to do with getting a feel for, for the cost of something. The fact that 
that the service can be covered uh, 80 to 90 percent depending upon your insurance program mm -hmm. through the insurance really makes that uh, wonderful. So it's almost mm -hmm. tied into the copay kind of a thing. You're paying Correct. a little bit, you're getting a lot. Correct. So, um, you know, I mean, I don't think we need to go into specifics and all that sort of thing, but from an affordability standpoint mm -hmm. for the average Silicon Valley professional, mm -hmm. is this really an affordable form of health care? Absolutely. Our hospital starts at $295 a visit for simple standard care. And the fees go up depending on the complexity of the cases. Mm -hmm. However, because of the nature of the house call business, since we can't bring in the CAT scan machine and MRI to your home, right. it wouldn't fit in my car either. I need um, a bigger car. <laughs> <laughs> because we deal with lighter cases or less acute cases, um, the fees are very reasonable when comparing uh, with comparable ER visits, emergency room visits, mm -hmm. or urgent care visits where the fees would be double or even triple the cost that we charge the sure. patient. So when the patients actually get the experience, the personalized medical service that we provide at the com comfort of their own home, mm -hmm. where we save them hours and hours of waiting time and the aggravation and hassle for care. So it balances out and it makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. And I'm just going to take the one number you said, you know, for a simple house call, it's, um, I think you said $295, that's yes. $300. And if you're getting 80% reimbursed, that's 240 of that, of that 300. So it's really mm -hmm. not that expensive when mm -hmm. push comes to shove. Right. And I think the thing that's useful to think about that is this is kind of an adjunct to whatever your other health care activities are. I think you mentioned Absolutely. to me also that you wouldn't necessarily look to become their primary care physician. Is that correct? No, that's right. When uh, It's funny you ask that question because most patients, new patients, ask me if I could become their primary care physician after they experience the care because they've never had a care like this before sure. <laughs> or they miss the old way. Um, and I usually tell them, don't change anything. Just keep your primary care physician and just keep us in mind when you need us. Mm -hmm. When you can't get to see your regular doctor, then give us a call. Or if you're not sure whether you should go to the emergency room or urgent care or your regular doctor, you just need somebody to just talk to for a simple medical consultation. Just give us a call. And that's what I usually tell them. That's great. That's fantastic. So, um, I had a thought, and then it's disappeared. So let, let me ask you this. I, there was something I actually got one written down here. Let's talk, I want to kind of go back to something we had talked about a little bit earlier, um, and that is why some uh, the, 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 the younger generation that are going through medical school right now are opting not to go in the direction of primary care. Mm -hmm. And... Um, What's what has changed? I mean, this used to be the thing to do is to go become a it was be a doctor or a lawyer, okay, mm -hmm. and uh, but but it seems to it's it's not quite the as attractive as it used to be uh, for mm -hmm. the profession. Is that am I am I making things up or I have a cousin who is a doctor and okay. he that's what he he was a uh, uh, primary care doctor mm -hmm. uh, on the in the East Coast and he mm -hmm. uh, about less than a year ago, or maybe a little bit more than a year ago, he sold his practice so he didn't have to do mm -hmm. that anymore. Now he's mm -hmm. working at a hospital and it's a little bit easier for him. Mm -hmm. So I guess, I mean, I, that's a personal experience of mine to see somebody, that's what he was doing and mm -hmm. doing and loved so much and he's not doing it anymore. Mm -hmm. So what are the circumstances that are causing these people to be less comfortable in that environment? Right. I think it's multifactorial, but some of the reasons that comes to my mind right now um, are the following. One is that the insurance company has um, a lot of power in mm -hmm. healthcare system in, in the U.S. And um, because they're the payer for most patients who have insurance plans and they control the negotiated rate for mm -hmm. in-network providers, once you're an in-network provider, you are at their mercy for doing certain things. So, so you so, don't necessarily get to make the, the determination of exactly how the patient care should be because of correct. the parameters of what you can or can't offer. That's correct. That's correct. That's most unfortunate. Right. And I think that's one of the re biggest reasons why 
it turns away some of the doctors um, who would have really loved to stay in the field of primary care because it just, when you do the math, it just doesn't work just out. Doesn't it up. just doesn't work out anymore. And uh, it's unfortunate because uh, we need more brilliant physicians. Yeah, who, well, which is so we're going to have a shortage here in a couple of years. <laughs> Folks, I want to remind you that if you have any questions for Dr. Kim, to please, please uh, go up to her website, get the information uh, of how to contact her, or uh, send an email through us at info at referencepointtv.com, and we will make sure that she gets that information because this is, this is incredible information. I think this is an important area. This is one of those things that offers um, a, a breath of fresh air into the healthcare system. I mean, the whole, this has been on people's minds now for a long, last two years, all the discussion of it. But what you're offering is a practical um, circumstance or, uh, or solution to, uh, to, to the medical challenges that people have that actually works out to be an affordable mechanism. We have just a few minutes left in the show, Dr. Kim, so I, I mm -hmm. thought maybe I'd, I'd ask you to kind of like just tell us again about the, this concept of, of home care. I want people to hear this again. I mean, the mm -hmm. benefits of, of uh, working within this kind of, uh, of, of a construct. Imagine what it will be like to have a doctor come to you when you're sick and you simply need to see a doctor to mm -hmm. take care of you. And all you have to do now is to call Best MD House Calls. And a doctor will answer the phone, ask you a few questions, come to your home or your workplace or your hotel room within an hour, and take good care of you, and you feel better right away. <laughs> and we save you time and money, bringing best quality care at an affordable price at the comfort of your home. Fantastic. Well, I can only hope that this um, form of, of care is something that's um, popping up all over the country. As a matter of fact, I think you mentioned to me that you know of a number of other places in the country where there are physicians that are doing something similar. Mm -hmm. Because this sounds to me to be a really wonderful uh, thing for, for us as uh, uh, individuals and people who could use health care. So, Dr. Kim, I really want to thank you for coming here and being on my show. It's been a pleasure to have you. Fantastic information. And, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you wrote that, taken some notes here, or make sure you go up to her website and get the information that you need about this concept of uh, uh, home health care. So, thank you very much, Dr. Kim. And, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you next time at Reference Point.